So let's all find ourselves on our hands and knees. Make sure you stack the shoulders over the wrists, hips over the knees, and at your own pace, we'll inhale to melt the belly down, gazing up towards the ceiling, and exhale is slightly more active as we pull belly button into the spine, gazing towards your navel and pushing the floor away from you. We're just repeating at our own pace, inhale to melt everything down, gaze up, exhale, cat back, push the floor away, gazing down. Already feeling free to add in any variations. My cat's gonna be running around. <laughs> so are you? Oh, can you go down? Oh, baby. All right. <laughs> Feel free to take circles through the torso if you like. If you'd like to stretch out the forearms, maybe try flipping the fingers in towards yourself. Maybe trying a few rounds of cat cow here, see how that feels. Let's find your way towards a neutral tabletop and inhale the left arm up towards the ceiling. Take a deep breath in and exhale, we'll glide that shoulder down towards the mat and extend the right arm long. From here, we press away with the back of the left hand, rotating our chest towards the ceiling. See if you can take your gaze up. Pressing our way back. Tabletop, second side, sweeping right arm up towards the ceiling, deep breath in. Exhale, we glide the shoulder down to the mat, extending left arm long, pressing away with the back of that right hand. And see if we can draw our gaze towards the ceiling without affecting where the hips are. Pressing our way back through towards tabletop. Keep the hips straight over the knees. We're just walking ourselves forward, melting our chest down. It's a heart opening pose or puppy pose. We can gaze forwards or gently and melt the forehead down on your mat. Beginning to walk ourselves back to tabletop. Find one more cat back just to unwind from that pose. So push the spine up towards the ceiling. And let's tuck the toes. Press our way towards our first downward dog. Feel free to keep this one moving. Maybe you'd like to take a few pedals to the feet here. Just doing whatever feels good to begin to open up through the backs of the legs. Really getting the chest through, energetic line all the way through, down through your ankles. If your ankles don't touch the ground, no worries but we are drawing that line of energy all the way down long spine. On an inhale, we roll through to find plank, hold in your plank shape, and exhale as you find a deep bend of the knees and return back towards downward dog. A few more at your own pace, rolling through to plank. Exhale, bend the knees back to downward dog. Keep it flowing, follow your breath. The next time we are in our plank pose, we hold. I call these staff push-ups for my training. Everything stays in line, nothing changes, except you find shoulder isolation. So I'm melting down, kissing the shoulder blades behind me, and we press the floor away. That is the only thing that is shifting. Your ribs are wrapped in. We are not finding that big arch in the spine. Keep that wrapped. Nice, strong plank. And we're still pushing for another five, four, Three, two, on one, press it back to downward dog. We have two more rounds of this, rolling through to plank, holding here, isolating the shoulders, push the floor away. We're here for five, four, three, two, on one, back to downward dog. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Next, inhale, curling up. One more time, push the floor away, isolate the shoulders, five, four, three, two, and one. Stay in our downward dog, we're counting five deep breaths at your own pace, and at the base of that fifth exhale, we'll melt our knees down nice and wide. 
child's pose, no rush. We have five deep breaths in our downward dog, and then we melt down. No rush, but once we are in our child's pose, feel free to rock side to side, maybe opening up through one armpit and the other. Maybe your head gently rocks one side to the other. Curling up through the spine and sitting up. All right, this is a new exercise that I just learned a couple days ago, so bear with me. It's challenging, and I did a lot of these today, so let's see if I can even demonstrate this properly. So first, let's have the legs hip-width apart. You want your head down on the mat, 90-degree line in your arms, and your forearms up against your thighs. Find this alignment first. From here, all you're going to do is push the floor away from you and come on up. This is step number one. Let's try this again very slowly from this position. Lower the head down so we're not bumping your head onto the ground. Make sure that the wrists are stacked, the elbows are stacked over the wrists here. Take a deep breath in and exhale, push the floor. If that's really easy, we're going to up the game a little bit more. Head to the floor. Tuck the toes, lift the knees up two inches. From there, take a deep breath in, exhale, push away. Lower the knees, repeat the whole thing. Lower the head down. Make sure those elbows are stacked over the wrists as best you can, lift the knees up a few inches, deep inhale, exhale, push. All right, let's try this one more time. I'm just going to go up to the camera so I can make sure we're all okay here. Yeah, aha, uh -huh. head down. <laughs> I'm just seeing how this is working. Knees up two inches. Awesome, elbows over the wrists. Hello. <laughs> and push, if you can, if this is impossible, I know this is challenging, keep the knees on the floor. If you feel that this is working out for you, we're taking this one step further. Let's pray that I can demonstrate this. All right, so for the fun, guessing you can see where this is leading. Same starting position. Crown of the head down. This time, tuck the toes and straighten the legs. Deep breath, exhale, push. And bend the knees and start this all again. Head down. Can you lift and straighten through the legs? Deep breath, oh, and the push. <laughs> again, if this is impossible, we're doing a few more. You choose, either knees stay on the ground, knees lifted up two inches, or find that full variation, with the legs long, let's just do this a couple more times. I know, it's challenging, we got this. How are we doing? Great, thank you. <laughs> awesome. This is very challenging, but it's such a great strengthener. Okay, let's rest in child's pose and take a few deep breaths. Let that go, if it made some giggles happen, that's great, right? <laughs> Curling up through the spine, tuck the knees back to parallel, tuck the toes, we'll press it straight back towards our downward dog. Lifting the right leg up towards the ceiling. Exhale, draw knee into the chest, we're finding that plank shape. Inhale, we lengthen high. Cross the knee towards your left elbow to twist. Breath and extend. Knee to the right elbow, freeze. Freeze right here in your plank shape. Can you extend the leg all the way to the side without dropping the height of that leg? And bend the knee. That's all we're doing, extending long. And bend, let's go for two more. Two. One. From here, long leg, hold. We're sweeping up, carving towards our one-legged dog. From our one-legged dog, cross to the left elbow. Pass over the right elbow, extend long. And we repeat, sweeping up. 
Repeating this at your own pace, we cross the knee over first, lengthen past that right elbow, extend the leg, and sweep. Let's go one more round. Doing the best we can, strengthening portion of class, we got it. Back towards our downward dog. Take a few deep breaths before we keep moving. Lengthen your right leg up and back. Stepping the foot through between the hands. And let's easily lower that back knee down, untuck the toes, palms together. Lift up and back. Try to lift so that we're not crunching into our low spine while we're going towards this back bend. Melting the pelvis further forward towards the mat. And make sure that the right knee is stacked over that right ankle. Palms down. I like to wiggle my right ankle forward just a couple of inches to make this stretch more accessible. So lengthening through that right hamstring, we're doing the best we can to pull this right hip to square. It likes to pull out forwards of that hip, try to pull that back and see if you can or find that nice long spine first, foot flex to the ceiling. And from there, go ahead and melt the chest full forwards. Refining a deep bend in that right knee. This time, find a clap behind the back. Lengthen through the arms, palms together. Contact your palms down the back of your left thigh. Make sure we're on mute. I think someone accidentally unmuted themselves. Big heart opener here. So we think palms up and back. Deep breath. Planting the palms down. Tuck the back toes. Energy through the legs. Step back. Let's start by lowering down to the mat. Elbows are grazing the side of the waist as we lower. Cobra pose, the pelvis stays rooted down towards the mat. We lower down. From here, tuck the toes. Elbows pinned in, deep breath in. It's just a push up. See if you can find one long line as you press up. And let's refine our downward dog, taking at least three deep breaths. If we haven't engaged that ujjayi breath already, let's do so now. Inhale through the nose. And exhale through the nose with a gentle constriction at the back of your throat. Should sound like an ocean sound as you breathe in. And as you breathe out. Keeping this going. Inhaling, left leg high. Exhale as we draw you into the chest, find that plank. Breath in, extend. Exhale, tap knee to right elbow. Inhale, lengthen. Whoops. <laughs> Exhale, freeze the knee past your left elbow, hold. Keep that plank strong without changing anything. Extend the left leg, do not touch the ground, and bend the knee. Three more times, extend. We bend. Extend. And bend, last round, we lengthen, and bend this time, lengthen, sweep up, one-legged duck. This time we cross knee to right elbow, pass the left elbow, extend the leg, sweep up and back. Let's go for three more rounds if you can. Tap, cross, extend, and lift. We got it, couple more rounds. The next time you find your downward dog, stay, or next time you go around, breathe, find your downward dog and breathe. This is your home position. Try to make it your resting pose. It may not feel like it, but this is our rest for now. Let's lift the left leg up and step through between the hands. Lowering that back knee down, untuck the toes. 
palms together, lift up to go back. Pressing the pelvis forward on each exhale. We are lifting up so we're not crunching that low spine. Palms down. I personally like to wiggle my left ankle forward an inch or two. Hips are square as we pull back and lengthen through that left hamstring. Trying to find a long spine first. From there, go ahead and melt the, chair, the belly towards the thigh and wrap. Refining that deep line, so draw the ankle in towards yourself a little bit if you moved it out like I did. Whatever your opposite clasp was, I had my left thumb on top, this time my right thumb's on top, whatever is the opposite for you. Lengthening through the arms, maybe you begin to draw the hands down the back of that right thigh. Trying to keep that breath, we never lose the breath. On an inhale, palms forward, lift up to go back. Exhale, as we plant the palms, tuck the back toes, energy through that leg. Step to plank, once again in one piece, lower down nice and slow. Inhale, cobra, the pelvis stays rooted down. And push up to plank, if you can, lower down, tuck the toes, deep breath, one piece, push, and we find ourselves back. Take another little pause in child's pose. Knees are super wide. Energy through those arms, forehead melts down. Curling our way, tucking the toes, knees to parallel and press it back, downward dog. We're going to be moving through, through a couple rounds of sun A here. So at the base of your next exhale, we gaze up towards the hands. Let's start by stepping our feet forward. Toes touch, heels one inch apart, and the knees slightly. Make sure the head is completely released. You might want to clasp opposite elbows. Maybe take your head for a little nod or a little shake. Maybe the body gently sways. Releasing the arms heavy, hands come onto the shins as we lengthen through the hamstrings, halfway lift, long spine. Exhale, fold the chest. Three more breaths this way. Inhale, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, fold. Twice more, inhale. Let it go. One more breath. Release. Curling up through the spine, we sweep our arms up towards the ceiling, palms touch, exhale, melt through heart center, finding your way towards mountain pose, Tadasana, sweeping up, breath in, exhale as we dive forwards, halfway lift, inhale, exhale, plant the palms, step back, from here we're going towards Chaturanga, shoot that weight forwards, lower 90 degrees, right from here, we flip the toes, up dog, pelvis is now off the ground. Exhale as we press our way back. At least five deep breaths here. All right, if you choose to float, you can always choose to step to the front of the mat, but if you're joining me in the float, come on to the balls of the feet, gazing up towards the hands, bending the knees, and as lightly as you can, seem to find some float and gently land your feet down. Inhale as you come to halfway lift. Exhale, melt the chest. Curling up through the spine, we swing the arms up, breath in. Exhale through heart center, mountain pose, hands inside of the body. Inhale, lift. Exhale, fold. 
Inhale, halfway. If we jump back, you can always step back. If you're jumping back, please make sure that your elbows are bent as your feet land. You never ever jump back into plank. Try to land softly if you jump, and we'll all make it back towards our downer dog. Let's take a few deep breaths here, and we'll repeat Sade one more time. Gazing up towards the hands, onto the ball of the feet. If you're floating, bend the knees, legs be float. Halfway lift on the inhale. Exhale, mouth curling up through the spine. Inhale, arms up towards the sky. Exhale, press palms to center, mountain pose. Inhale, length. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway. Float back if you can, otherwise. We just go to Chaturanga, making it back towards your downer dog however you like, or feel free to skip entirely and come straight to our downer dog at any point. So that vinyasa or that Chaturanga up dog, you can just skip that and choose to come towards your downer dog instead. All right, let's step the right foot through between the hands. Energy through the back of the left leg. Lengthening the right hamstring as far as you're ready for. The right hamstring does not need to be completely lengthened, but do make sure that the back leg is nice and long. We're just shifting back and forth at our own pace here. The next time we are in that D lunge, stay. That back foot, let's move it just an inch or two forwards and rotate the right ankle down. We're going into warrior one now. For me personally, in order to get my hips truly square, I have to walk my right foot over just a couple of inches to the right side of the mat. That enables me to pull my left hip forwards a little bit more. Deep bend in that right leg. Let's raise the arms up. We are in warrior one. From here, we find a clasp behind the back, an opening in the chest, and without changing the position of your hips or your legs, let's dive to the inside of that right knee. Pulling the arms up and over. Maybe one day your head will touch the ground. Uh, I am definitely not there in my own practice yet, but that's where the energy is reaching. On an inhale, we raise both arms back up, warrior one. Planting the palms down, option to float that right leg. From there, shift your weight forwards, chaturanga. Both feet come down on the in breath. And exhale, pressing it back. Straight away to the left side, left foot steps to the center between the hands, energy through that back leg. Lengthening through that left hamstring and refolding into your deep lunge, gazing forward. These shifts happen at your own pace. The next time we find ourselves in that deep lunge, I'm going to step my back foot in just an inch or two and get that ankle to rotate down. You may, like me, want to wiggle that left foot slightly to the left side of the mat to make that warrior one and the squared hips more accessible. Let's find the opposite clasp, whichever one you did not do, the one that usually feels weird. Pulling back first, big chest opener, and a gentle dive forwards the inside of that left knee without affecting the position of your hips. On an inhale, we float the arms up, warrior one. Exhale, palms down, float the left leg if you can, rock your weight forwards, chaturanga. Inhale, come up. Exhale, auto move downward dog. Let's step the right foot through between the hands. Both arms reach up. <laughs> Trying to get a better view on camera here. Okay, hands to heart center. Rocking your weight forwards. 
pouring all the way into that right leg, and we come up, Virabhadrasana three. The hardest part of this pose, at least for my own body, is to get that left hip down. It always likes to open up. We don't want that. Rotating down towards the mat as best you can. If this is really easy, try extending the arms long in front of you. Energy through the fingers all the way through the ankle and see how that feels. We are tipping straight to standing, split from here. If you can, reaching for the ankle and not the ground. If that doesn't work, like me, <laughs> the floor is right there to catch you, no worries. The final step is to drop the head in line with the spine. If you can, that usually knocks at least out of my body off balance there, but eventually that's where we're aiming. Let's find our way back towards that high lunge. Rotating back, ankle down to the floor, 90 degrees. We're in our warrior two. Gazing past that right hand, aiming for 90 degree bend in that right leg. Reversing the right palm and knee to back. Reverse warrior. From here, lengthening through that right hamstring, lifting the torso up and over to the side as far as you can before you release down. Little to no weight, put the hand on that leg if you can, or lightly touch the ground. If we want to increase this, it's up to you. Left arm reaches overhead, perhaps, and perhaps the right arm also comes to frame the face. That's more of a power position if you want to take it. Let's return back towards warrior two. Reverse that palm, reverse warrior. Take a deep breath in. All on the exhale, plant the palms, step, chaturanga. That's a lot on that one exhale, but we try. And then we return back at our own pace, down or up. Breathing here. Left foot steps through between the hands. Both arms reach up. Starting with the hand at heart center, I'm rocking my weight forwards over that left leg. Seeing if you can maybe lift the right leg into Virabhadrasana three. Once again, that right hip wants to open, square it up. If you want to increase the difficulty, maybe we extend the arms overhead. The more you think of that energetic line from the tip to the fingers all the way through the ankle, the easier this pose becomes. Tipping our way towards standing split, you're aiming for your ankle, not the floor. If it doesn't work out, the floor is right there to catch you, so don't worry about it. If you do have that balance, maybe the last step is to drop the head in line with the spine. No worries if that knocks you off balance. It's still a journey on my end too. Finding our way back towards high lunge. Back ankle drops down 90 degrees, warrior two on the left side. Reverse the left palm, lean back. Lengthening through the left hamstring, reaching up and over. Finding our way, Triganasana. I personally have a habit of opening this hip too much. Try to close that right hip down a little bit. And then you're really finding that twist with the chest and look up towards the ceiling. Once again, if you took that active position, reach overhead. Maybe the left arm comes to frame the face as well. Or maybe not. All good choices. Finding our way back to warrior two, deep bend. Reverse that left palm, lean it back. Cartwheel down and chaturanga. Inhaling as we come to upward dog. Exhale, melt it back. Downward dog, little pause again in child's pose. Find the knees. 
Another option for a rest is just to come all the way up with the legs together, palms down on the legs, and just catch your breath. Refining the breath if we've lost it. And whenever you're ready, take your time. Finding our way back towards that downward dog. All right. <laughs> Red foot steps through between the hands. Come on up, high lunge. From here, we're gonna drop that back ankle down again into warrior two, reverse the right palm. Once again, reverse warrior. Side angle, that hand comes down to the floor and left arm towards the ceiling. Option to bind here. The right hand comes underneath the right leg. My left arm comes behind me and I can see I can grab that left wrist. If not, just hold nice and open. All right, choices. <laughs> You can choose to unbind and come straight back into triangle or we keep the bind and gently lengthen through the leg. Ideally, our gaze is up. I personally find that this can bring a lot of strain to my neck at this point, so feel free to drop your gaze down to your right foot. There are options from here. If you are not bound, you're just going to come into your warrior two and see if you can float into your half moon. The other option, I'm not even sure if I can personally demonstrate this right now, but you are bound in that triangle. You bend the right knee, try to draw the left foot further forward, and maybe, maybe not, <laughs> lift the left leg up. And then maybe also straighten through the right leg, perhaps. If you fall, I guided, oh well. <laughs> Otherwise, you can find nice and easy open position as well. Warrior two. Lengthening through that right leg, flex that right foot. Both legs are parallel. Wide legged forward fold. Holding down, drop the head. Let's find a halfway lift. You're kind of arching through here. And melt down. More options. If you have a headstand practice from here, feel free and I'll talk us through it. If you're like, no way, this is not where my body wants to be today, no worries. Just grab opposite ankles and hang tight here. Take a few breaths in your stretch. And for those of us going into headstand, of course, the head needs to reach the ground, but do make sure that your elbows are stacked right over the wrists and my arms are back. So I'm making a triangle for my two hands and the crown of my head. From there, you rock your weight forward slightly and maybe if the legs lift off, if this is where you are, fantastic. Moving super slow if we're going into our full inversion. Hang with me if you chose not to do this and we're just in our forward fold. Just take some deep breaths. If we're inverted, we open up nice and slow. Do not crash slowly with control. Flex the feet. We gently lower ourselves down. And let's all walk the hands towards the left ankle and draw our torso in. And other side, walking over, pulling the torso close. Back center, bending the knees as we curl on up to stand. Finding warrior two to the right side, deep bend, reverse warrior. All on the exhale, so let's deep breath in, all on the exhale. Cartwheel, step, chaturanga. It's a lot. Inhale up. 
Exhale down. Adho Mukha. Deep breath. The left foot steps through between the hands. We rise up, high lunge. Back ankle rotates down to the ground, back into our warrior two. Reverse the left palm, lean back. Hand reaches down towards the earth, right arm opens. If you want to bind, left hand underneath that left leg and see if you can grab once you do have that clasp, do rotate the chest. Open one long energetic line from the head down to that right foot. From here, we're moving our way towards triangle, either bound or unbound. If you're unbound, just refining that triangle, deep breaths, or you can choose to keep that bind and play with the head up. See how that feels on your neck personally. For me, I do sometimes have to gaze down because there's a lot of pressure there. And whenever we feel that pain or discomfort, best to lay off, especially with our neck. Now from here, I'm gonna demonstrate if you're not bound. If you're not bound, you come back into warrior two, pour your weight into that left leg, and we go towards our half moon here. If you have a block, of course, at home, you can use the block to support you. Or we are bound. That triangle, and you bend that left knee and step the right foot forward slightly. See if you can find that balance over the left leg, get light on that right foot, and begin to lift up. Maybe if you're secure, that left leg begins to straighten as well. Are we breathing? <laughs> Finding our way back to warrior two on the left side. Reverse warrior. And ooh, wrong steps, I'm sorry. Lengthen through that left leg, flex the left foot. We rotate back into that wide-legged forward fold. Hands on the hips, let's fold forwards again. This time from here, if you want, second round of headstand or Collapse behind the back, lengthen through the arms, try to keep the palms together, palms open, not the position we're looking for, palms together and lift up and back. If you're in that headstand, I'm gonna demo again, turning the other way so you can see my hand position a little bit better. Make sure that the elbows are stacked over the wrists. From here, if that's where you are, you don't need to keep going. If this feels like enough for today, maybe you begin to get light on your feet. Maybe. And you start here, starting slow. And only if you feel confident, we begin to lift up and find our inversion. Whichever position you chose, make sure that we're still breathing. If we're inverted, how slowly can you come down? Relax the feet, use control as you land. Bending the knees slightly, let's all curl up to stand. Finding our warrior two on the left side, reverse the palm, lean back, deep breath in. All on the exhale, cartwheel step, chaturanga. Inhale up, exhale, downward dog. Once again, counting five slow deep breaths. And at the base of that fifth exhale, we'll take another rest. Child's pose. Okay, when we're ready, 
Let's find our way backwards, downward dog. We're going to slow things down from here. So once you find your downward dog, let's lift the right leg up and back. From there, you can do what feels good. I like to open up that hip and bend that knee. I also have a habit of opening and twisting the upper body. Try not to do that. Wrapping the right side of the body down so that your shoulders are in alignment here. And let's step the right foot to the outside of the right hand, lizard pose. Options, active lizard is with the back leg nice and long. You can even begin to walk your hands forward. Otherwise, feel free to drop the knee down, untuck the toes. Maybe you slide your way onto the forearms, or maybe you stay lifted. Find any stretch that serves your body right here where you are. Let's all lower the back knee down and untuck the toes. Taking that right hand and twist. We're gazing back. If you want to take this further, we just bend that back knee, try to grab the pinky side of that foot. If this is not happening today, just stay in this twist. Don't worry about it. But if you can, grab the foot. And on each exhale, we're melting the pelvis further forward. If you feel like opening up that right hip, that's fine. If you feel like lowering down onto that left forearm, those are all valid options to try. Let's take one more slow breath in without ricocheting, with control, lowering that foot back down. I'm going to toe heel that right foot to the left side of the mat. We're setting up for pigeon on the right side. So your shin is as parallel to the top of the mat as you can get. I cannot get there. My tips, hips are super tight. So I definitely have an angle in my leg. And if that's you, that's totally fine. I'm trying to extend that back leg long as best I can. If you have a block or a cushion at home and there's a lot of space between your seat and the floor, feel free to wiggle a block there. And as we melt down, some people enjoy having a block to support their chest. So if you have these props at home, feel free. Otherwise, we're just melting down as far as we want and seeing if you can relax just a little bit deeper on each exhale. If you're super happy here in your pigeon, feel free to stay right where you are. If you want to take the second variation with me, uh, let's do this now. So coming on up, so stacking the shoulders over the hips. Similar to what we did before. So I like to anchor my left hand towards the center. I twist the right arm back. If you want to stay here, that's great. If you want to bend that knee and catch the toe. And then from here, see how my shoulders are kind of open. I want to re-square my shoulders forward. I don't have the mobility for this tonight, but if you want to snake that foot inside of the crook of your elbow and you have that mobility, um, that's a great option too. But I will not be demonstrating that tonight. Breathing here. If you're in this position, release. If you're just in pigeon, let's come on up. Tuck the back toes, palms down, energy through the back leg. Let's sweep up back to that one-legged dog. And back to downward dog. If you want, I'm going to take a flow here, rolling up to the spine, shifting that way forward, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, let's press it back. Lifting the left leg up and back, open the hip, bend the knee without affecting your torso. 
Sometimes my left side likes to open up here with that leg, try to keep that square, and just externally rotate in that right hip. From here, we're finding lizard. So stepping that left foot to the outside of the left hand, whatever variations you played with on the first side. So maybe that back leg was long and you walk the hands forward. Maybe the back knee was dropped. Maybe the arms are dropped. Just play whatever variations you found on the right side. Let's all drop that right knee down and untuck the toes. Left arm comes behind you. You gaze past that hand. Choosing to stay here if that's what you did on the first side or see if you can catch the pinky side of that foot. If the left hip wants to open up, you can go ahead and let that open. Without ricocheting, gently lower that leg down. Toe healing the left foot over to the right side of the mat, setting up for pigeon on side two, standing that leg long to make sure that you're not falling. Your hips aren't falling from one side or the other. They are stacked evenly. Lengthen through the spine and go ahead, folding forwards. We're trying to release all of our muscles here. So just focusing on surrender and letting go on each exhale. If you're perfectly happy resting in your pigeon for a few more moments, please do. Otherwise, if you want to move on with me, let's do so now. Walking your torso back upright. This time, the left fingerprints comes forward. You can find that twist again with the left arm. Looking back towards that hand, maybe you stay here. Or maybe you capture the toes. From there, you re-square the shoulders forward. Maybe, maybe getting a nice stretch through that left side. If you can get the foot to the crook of your elbow, more power to you. I'm going to choose to stay right here tonight. Being gentle as we let that go. If you're just melted in your pigeon, we'll come back up. Tucking the toes under, back toes, energy through that leg, pressing up and back. Refining your way towards your down or dog, either staying your down dog or taking a flow here, rolling through the spine. Chaturanga. Inhale, up. Exhale, down or dog. Now we're going through one more strengthener before we melt completely down to the mat. So we're heading towards dolphin from here. You're just lowering the elbows down to the mat without this V shape happening. Uh, that is a possibility, but let's really try to focus on getting those forearms parallel. If this feels good, let's walk the toes just a little bit more forward. This is another new strengthener I discovered. So if you can gaze over here for a minute, just as a little demo, I'm going to shoot my head forward towards the mat at a diagonal to almost touch the mat. Shoulders are going over the elbows and push it back. You're just shifting your head forwards, almost raising the mat and push. Shoulders past the elbows. Just doing this a few more times. We got it. We are resting after this. This is our last little push. 
holding that dolphin. Can you press straight back into your downward dog, working equally with the hands? <laughs> if that didn't work out, it's okay. It's challenging. And let's hold back, child's pose. Curling up through the spine. We're finding our way towards the seat. So kind of switching up forwards of your mat. Long spine. Feet hip width apart, legs hip width apart. Arms in front of you, taking a deep breath in. And on our exhale, we articulate down the spine. Using that control, feeling one part of the back coming down at a time. Once you're there, planting the palms down and drawing the ankles in towards your seat. All right, bridge from here. Tilt the pelvis so that the back space touches the, touches the mat. And we lift up towards the ceiling, taking a deep breath in here. And exhale, articulating down. Twice more. Inhale. Exhale. Pin the back space down, tilt the pelvis and lift. Roll it down. Next one is a hold. Pressing it up. And if you want, you can walk the shoulder blades slightly underneath yourself. Find a clasp of the palms. Hands down, root it down, and lift the pelvis higher. Now, without changing anything, you just tap the knees together and open up. A little bit of a strengthener laying on our back here. So we're just tapping the knees. I like shake like crazy on this exercise. I'm not even certain quite why, but it is quite challenging without lowering the hips at all. We're tapping the knees together and open. A few more times. Nice and slow. Let's take our last round. Release that clasp, curl it down, super duper slow. And from there, we'll draw both knees into the chest, little squeeze, maybe a gentle rock side to side. Keeping a hold of your right knee, we just extend the left leg long on the mat. Have energy through that long leg. I'm drawing my right knee up towards my right armpit. And from there, let's take a twist. So drawing the left knee across the body, right arm extends long. We want both shoulder blades to be nice and grounded. I'm using that left hand to increase the twist. Refinding yourself on your spine, bending the left leg, cross right ankle over left thigh. I'm flexing my right foot. Open up that right hip. Maybe you interlace the hands behind your left thigh. Sometimes I actually, that's for some reason for me a little challenging. So I grab the top of my left knee and use my forearm to gently ease open that hip. But whatever works best for your body, trying to draw that shape in closer. Maybe you want to take a gentle little side to side motion that helps open up the hips, at least for me. And we'll release the right leg long on the mat, drawing the left knee in towards the chest first, and then up towards the left armpit. From there, I take the knee across my body, left arm extends long to the side, and then your gaze is past the left arm. Turning back through center, crossing left ankle over a bent right leg, so over that right thigh, either interlace behind the leg, or I like to grab the top of my shin here, my knee, and gently open up that left hip with my forearm. Maybe you took that little side to side motion.
And let's find our way toward the happy baby. Grabbing the outside edges of your feet, try to make sure that the whole spine is rooted down. Sometimes it likes to lift like so. So try to get that tailbone down even and pulling down. If you feel open enough, you may want to extend one leg and the other, or you open up both legs into a straddle up to you. If you feel like you need anything else for your practice tonight, feel free to keep flowing for about a minute or so. If you are ready for our final resting pose of Shavasana, we will hug both knees into the chest and draw the head up to the knees in a little ball. And all on the exhale, we explode out legs as wide as the mat, palms up facing the ceiling, close the eyes. Any control of your breath here is now released. Beginning to find deeper breaths in, filling up your lungs completely nice and slow. Gently release. Beginning to wake up your physical body, starting with these deep breaths. Maybe some motion enters your fingertips, perhaps the head rocks from side to side. Finding any gentle way to reawaken your physical body. Keeping the eyes closed, let's roll over to the right side of the body or the lunar side. And pressing our way up towards a nice tall seat. So either in Sukhasana, cross-legged seated position, nice and easy, or sitting on your shins. Palms can be facing up for a little bit more uh, receptive of a pose, or if you need more grounding tonight, palms down, maybe on your thighs, perhaps one on your heart and one on your belly. Tuning in to your breaths once more. Just noticing how your body shifts as you breathe all this motion inside. Let's seal in this practice together with one ohm. Inhale. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody.